Hello friends, today I'm going to show you how to easily expand your image with control nets. So let's get started. And after this video, I'm going to go stand outside. So if anyone asks, I'm outstanding. So I got this image here, right, that we're going to expand. And this is a fantasy island with a castle up here. Now we're going to use control net and the in painting model. Now, if you don't know what um, control net or in painting is, check my video up here to get uh, sorted with that. And then we're just going to go in here open our control net, we're going to drop that image in, and uh, we're going to enable this and click the little box here. This is in paint. That's going to preload our in painting preprocessor and our in painting model. You can obviously choose it by yourself. If you still have this at all, you're going to see all of these here. It's just easier to check the in paint here. After that, you're going to change the little resize mode here to resize and fill, because if you don't, this is not going to work. Because if you want to expand and we have just resize, well, let me show you. Let's put Fantasy Island up here. And we don't need to change from Euler A, but we're doing it anyway because I like DPM++ to Mkaris. 20 steps is fine for now. And let's begin with adding the height here. So we're going to add 10 to 24 on the vertical axis here. We're going to load our styles, the default negative and the digital oil painting. These can be found in the video description and the pinned comment below. And now if we generate, this is not going to work because we have down here just resize. So it's just going to drag the, this up on the vertical, just giving it a, a stretched kind of image. And this is not what we're looking for. And the same with crop and resize that will just crop the image and then do the same thing it's not going to stretch it but we're losing you can see we're losing the sides of the image so we don't have the castle here on the right etc so what we're going to do is we want to resize and then fill now the descriptions down here might be a little confusing and counterintuitive but don't matter what happens now is the canvas is going to resize and then the, the parts up here are going to fill with the rest. So let me show you here. Now we will expand upwards and downwards, which is exactly what happens. As you can see, we added some clouds up top here and some more of the water and the beach and, and some stones and whatnot down here. So that's a happy little image here. And now we can continue with this even further. And what we could do is we could drag this down to here. And now we can increase the width. So now we're expanding on the horizontal axis. We have all the settings the same. So now it's going to resize to right and left and fill that space. As you can see here, that's exactly what's happening. We're getting some new information into this scene. Now we have a little line here. But we can fix that later. We got some sort of a buildings on the right here to the village. So I think that's fairly cool. Now the details are still kind of low because we're expanding from this 512 by 512 image. So if we would have rendered an image from scratch to 1024 to 1024, it would have more details. But now we're just expanding our small little image. So what I'm going to show you now is how you can improve on this. So if we take this expanded image, so let's say this is the composition, this we like, this is what we want. We can send this to image to image. So we're pressing this button here, send to image to image. And now we need to adapt the prompt a little bit. We're adding the styles back again, find them in the description below. We have fantasy island, castle, village. Now we're not using control that now we're just doing an image to image. We're changing it here to Imkaris again. Now this isn't super important. I just like to do it. And this is where the magic happens, the denoising strength. Now, if you haven't been playing a lot with image to image, I recommend that you try a value between 0.4 and 0.6. 0.4, we will retain a lot of this image. As you can see, if we render a new one here, a lot of the composition will still be here. So we have the castle here on the right side. We have the little village, and the houses here on the right. But you can see our line here is pretty much gone. So that's fixed. And that looks kind of good, to be honest. And you can even see in the water here. Now the stones are, you know, they're slightly changed, but not a lot. You can see that stone, there's two stones there. And here we have 
Kind of almost gone there. But it, it doesn't add a lot of detail to the image. So if you want more details, if you want to change this a little bit, I recommend you putting this up to like 0.6, for example. Let's render this with the same seed so you can see the difference. And now we will introduce more changes to the image, but also add more detail. So as you can see here, the castle is still in the same place, but it's a little different. The bridge here, it's clearly a different kind of bridge. And we have a different house here. You see, everything is still sorta in the same place. It's just changed a little bit. But you have the composition that you got from the outpainting, the added bonus of more details. Now, a little trick here, if you are getting kind of blurry images or kind of lacking details, if you don't want to mess with the prompts, what you can do, let's take the image that we had from the beginning here, and let's drag that into PhotoP, PhotoP.com, and then you can have filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Now, this is too much, but about 75% at two pixels. Then we will get some, some extra detail in this. And we're only gonna use this as our input for image to image. Now you can also do this in your final step when you're feeling done with an image. And I use that a lot, but you can drag that one back in here. So we have the same image, it's just a little crisper. And now when we do the generation, we're gonna get just a tiny more sharpness into the image. So this is our first one at 100%, and this is the second one. Now we're getting some changes, as you can see, since we had the 0.6 denoising, so that's to be expected. However, you can see on the one, the second one is the one without the bridge. If you look at like just the terrain here, it's a little crisper. You get some more contrast, some more detail and in the water as well. You can see the little white spots here. First, second, much clearer, right? First, second, first, second. So that's just a cool way to add some more detail into your image. So I hear you saying, well, that's cool and all, Seb, but um, I don't like doing uh, islands with castles and stuff. I, I wanna do people. Can I do people? Well, yes, you can. Let's load here realistic photo portraits. And we are gonna generate woman face portrait. We're changing the settings again. And let's run this four times just to get a starting image. So we're getting a couple of faces here. They're all fairly similar. Let's go with the fourth one here. And we're gonna take our control net, drag that in there. And again, the same steps as previously, enable in paint, change the resize and fill. And let's expand. Let's add some height to this one. Let's do two images so we can uh, get something to choose from. So we have one with a little hat and then we got uh, the second one that's more basic here. Basic in the sense that is no hat. So let's go with a funny hat here. Drag that in and let's add the width. And you might be asking, well, why do I have to go like vertical and then horizontal or one one at a time. Well, you can't do an outpainting in both directions when you're doing uh, this workflow, because then the image is just gonna be stretched and you're not gonna add any information. Now there are probably a lot of other workflows like the old outpainting, like poor man's outpainting, that could probably work for you. But for this method, I prefer to use this workflow. If you have a better workflow, put it in the comments below. I'd love to test it out. And here we have two images that have been expanded. I think the right one here is a little better because the left one is uh, seems to be lacking a little bit of her arm. Maybe she's just holding it in a bit. That could be it. But uh, still, that's pretty cool. It's a pretty good result. Just remember to check your prompts when you're out painting. If you keep going like out here on the sides now, you might not want to add like new women's face portraits and stuff like that. You might want to prompt what you want out here. You can also just leave it blank. You can really leave everything blank, which is kind of cool with this in-painting method. So let's add some width here. Let's do 1300, drag that over there. Then it will just generate something new out of uh, what's available in the image. So it sees it's some sort of pattern here. It adds to that pattern and it seems that we're getting 
an extra line in the background under. To me, so far it looks pretty good. So here's our finished result. Both of them are fairly similar. And uh, again, yeah, pretty happy with it. Good picture. I hope you learned something today and you can use this in your workflow. Like and subscribe if you wanna. I'm not your boss. Do whatever you want. As always, have a good one. See ya.